Welcome to our training film here for our employability mentors at DeMonfort University. My name's Andy Morris and I lead our employability mentoring work. This film has been created to help our mentors develop skills and awareness in relation to mentoring that they can practice in their normal everyday lives in preparation for their actual mentoring experience. What we have here is actual footage from the mentoring training session combined with our commentary, ideas and encouragement where you can take away what you see in here and then apply it in your normal everyday lives to improve your mentoring technique. Now whilst this film will be a useful reference point for you in the future, it can't fully substitute actually attending the mentoring training with us at DMU, which we would obviously encourage you to do as working in a dedicated environment with other mentors will be of huge benefit to your mentoring technique. If at any point during this training film you have any questions that arise, please note them down and then contact us at the project and then we can help advise you. As you listen to the film, I encourage you to take notes, I encourage you to listen to the challenges and then think about the challenges in the coming days and weeks as you seek to apply that knowledge and those skills in your normal everyday lives. Thank you. I encourage you to take notes and focus and listen for the questions along the way so that you can note down the challenge and think about how you'll take that challenge and work on it in the coming days and weeks. The first exercise we undertook was an icebreaker where we encouraged the participants to take a mentor's name badge that was not their own. Then we asked people to introduce themselves briefly in turn stating their name and organisation. Mentors had to note who was the owner of the name badge and in the following networking activity they had to find the person introduce themselves, giving their own badge back and finding out why the other person was there and what they hoped to get from the session. Whilst the original instruction and task was to retrieve your own name badge by the end, there was also an opportunity to meet others as you mingled and find out about them. The core message here underlies a key point in mentoring, that whilst one might engage with mentoring to explore an initial point or issue, be open to other things that you can learn along the way that are not part of the topic but can often be hugely beneficial to your experience. As a mentor on our scheme, take time to think about your initial approach and what is it that you are being asked. How will you develop your relationship with your mentee to ensure that you are talking about the things that really matter? The next activity explored what employability mentoring is, which included a number of definitions being presented and then using the image of a relay button to convey something of value being passed from one person to another during a journey. It's critical for our mentors to understand employability and to share their own journey as this is the focus of the mentoring. I encourage you as mentors to develop your own understanding of what employability mentoring is for it to inform what you do and how. We are keen to hear from you about how you see employability mentoring and how it informs what you do. Following on from this, we presented employability mentoring in the context of the current climate at DMU. Here we explored three key reasons for undertaking the work that we do to underline its value. First and foremost is the pressure of the graduate climate and the importance of helping to prepare our students for what lays ahead. Secondly is the need to contribute towards the university's ongoing success regarding graduate employability which reinforces our status, standing and reputation for employable graduates in the National University Student League table. Finally, the project is one of a number of core mentoring based initiatives at the university that supports a student's successful transition into, through and out of DMU. This project contributes to our students' well-being, belonging and excelling at this institution as part of the Mentoring for All agenda. We encourage you to take time and think about the context for mentoring and how employability will inform how you work with our students. Also, perhaps think about industry and what does the working world require of graduates as this will also inform how you mentor students. The next activity allowed the participants to observe and feedback on good practice or I volunteered to answer questions as a mentor should from examples of students' inquiries read out by selected mentors. This was all about demonstrating different styles and approaches in response to questions and understanding the range of ways in which to share one's experience. As mentors, we can ask clarification questions and seek to diagnose the real inquiry by sharing what we have done before and how. Do you have a particular style that you typically adopt? How do you react and adapt to different opportunities to share your experience? Perhaps take time to think about this, as being conscious of your own style will help you when focusing on their issues and will likely help you to skillfully explore such things with them. Mentoring is not about knowing the correct answers, but it's more about knowing how to share what relevant experience you have 
in a way that connects with another person and their needs. Next, we turned our attention to the differences between mentoring, coaching and counselling. We do this as it's important for a mentor to understand the differences and therefore when they are working within or outside of their roles. We have developed an activity that would allow mentors to physically vote by placing themselves somewhere within a large triangle marked out on the floor, denoting where they stood in relation to a statement. Each of the three corners of the triangle represented either mentoring, coaching or counselling. Then we read out a range of statements which explained different situations with the student and asked the participant whether they thought the student required mentoring, coaching or counselling, or indeed a combination. We then discussed people's viewpoints and clarified the ideal response, though in truth some of the situations could represent more than one approach depending on other factors that were not given on the training cards. We also shared an example of a situation that was a clear safeguarding issue and therefore one which required an emergency response by the police. It's important to understand that as a mentor, it is your role to mentor. We as a project are on hand to signpost our student mentees to other services where you raise a concern with us and it becomes clear that there are additional needs. We are on hand to support, guide, advise, signpost and involve others appropriately. We then explored the role of a mentor using creative artistic interpretation. Using the medium of sculpture, we gave small groups the opportunity to express what a mentor is and aspects of their role. We then asked other groups to interpret the creations and try to identify what was being conveyed and what the group saw as the key role. It's essential for our mentors to understand their roles, to act as a guide on what they can do to help a student mentee and also to help manage expectations. The core aspects of a mentor's role are to respond to requests from mentees to meet up, call and to email them, to be punctual and attend scheduled meetings and listen to mentees, ask clarifying questions, challenge and encourage mentees, share your own experiences from your own perspective, build trust and rapport, to discuss the tools and techniques that you have used along the way that have positively influenced your experiences, undertake any actions you agree to do in between meetings and keep in close communication with the project. As a mentor, take time to reflect on the role description we provided you. Think about the core aspects of the role, ask clarification questions, to share experience, to encourage new action and to check in with the student's development. Every day is an opportunity to mentor someone, either formally or informally. Perhaps practice the basics of the role to develop your skills for when you meet a student for the first time. After a short break in the session, we return to explore the role of a mentee, drawing inspiration from the role of a mentor and looking at it from the other side. Again, to help manage expectations and to help the mentors understand how we prepare mentees, we took time to explain the role of a mentee. The core responsibilities of a mentee's role are to identify the things related to employability that they want to improve on, arrange meetings with you as their allocated mentor, ask you questions about the things they want to explore to improve their employability, listen to what you say and set actions that will help them make the changes that they want to make, meet up again and discuss what they did and what impact that this has had on them, drive the relationship forward and to keep the project updated on progress. Take time to reflect on the role of a mentee and perhaps memorise the core responsibilities. By doing so, when you meet with your mentee, you'll be able to help define the expectations for each other to help ensure that what they are doing is what is required in order to help the relationship grow. Mentoring has core values, things that matter. There are many values, but chiefly the core values that we impress in the training session are values of being student-led, i.e. the mentee drives the relationship. Voluntary, that neither party is forced to engage in mentoring but does so freely. Mutual learning, that both mentor and mentee can learn huge amounts from the experience. Non-directive, mentoring is not about telling someone what to do. Trust, we see that mutual trust is central to the success of any relationship. And finally, developmental. Mentoring is developmental and we are in the business of learning and that we can grow and learn by sharing experiences with each other. Take time to reflect on your own core values and how these might align to mentoring. In this activity, participants observed a mock mentoring session where project staff played mentor and mentee and where the mentor in the mock setting would then speak and act in ways that were not appropriate for mentoring. The task for participants was to decide on the severity of the mentor's behaviour by holding up either a red or a yellow card to denote whether something was a yellow card, a cause for potential concern, or a red card where a clear line had been crossed. The activity highlighted a difference in opinion for the participants demonstrating that due to the values and attitudes of different mentors present, there were subtle differences and therefore grey areas as to accepted behaviours. 
Ultimately, the project does not condone any inappropriate behaviour and as such sees all of the following words and actions unacceptable and encourages mentors to avoid such things. These include, but are not limited to, being late to a session without warning, being curt with a mentee, physical touch of any kind, personal comments, cutting across mentees when they are speaking, put downs or hurtful comments, bizarre comments without context, being distracted by a phone or other such devices, questioning the mentee's need for a mentor but without justifying it, bragging about one's own achievements, one-upmanship of any kind, using the mentee for your own personal gain, telling the mentee what to do, behaving or saying that you are objectively right, not committing to the time you've allocated to without agreement. When considering the inappropriate behaviours we've listed, do you see any that you might disagree with? It's important to recognise the impact of such things and we have learned from listening to both mentors and mentees and the impact it has had on them. We encourage you to be aware of your words and actions in mentoring. We encourage you to make every effort to ensure that your mentoring conversations are positive, are sensitive and that you are mindful of the influence that you have over others. Just like in everyday life, we encourage you to strive for positive relationships. As a result of the exercises we've worked through, we then handed the opportunity for our participants to take a turn in the hot seat. Here, participants took the opportunity to sit and mentor each other with a choice of preset mentoring questions or ones of their own choice. In small groups, they listened to each other and provided brief feedback on what they'd heard. Like any training, what you explore is only really validated by what you do with it afterwards. Take the opportunity where you can to consciously practice mentoring with those you meet by listening to what they have to say and then use stories from your own life that are relevant and appropriate to help them understand how you have the experience that may be of use to them. Mentoring requires you as a mentor to have a good understanding of self, your history and the experiences that you have been through. By doing so, you are best equipped to recount the experience that you have had in the right way, at the right time and in context to someone who has yet to experience life in the way you have and to possess the viewpoint that you do as a result. Thank you for taking the time to watch this film. We welcome your feedback.